Hello and welcome to the internet again. Today I'd like to talk about a min-maxing idea with regard to bicycle helmets. What use are they? Should you wear them? Do they provide any benefit? Those of you who watch the channel will know that a while ago I did a video where I worked out the chance one of my friends would have died of COVID if we'd handled the pandemic the same way as the USA or the UK or some other places had. Here in Western Australia, our government did a lot of work on shutting the borders down and keeping people safe. And we only lost 10 people out of a population of over two and a half million. Um, and you know, that goes to show what you can achieve if your government's actually prepared to do some work. Anyway, today we're going to talk about bicycle helmets. Here's one here. A while ago I was having um, a conversation with a friend. You know how you have these friends that are philosophical and when you find yourselves talking about nothing, you always find yourself talking about something which usually ends up in some sort of disagreement that possibly can become heated and hard work and the topic is pointless or at least minor. Well, I had one of those conversations probably a year or so ago, and it's been bugging me ever since. And I'm curious about something I said. This person uh, wears a hel uh, probably doesn't wear a helmet when she goes cycling. So when I said to her, oh, you don't need to wear a helmet if you've got shit for brains, she got a bit upset with me. And then we talked about the pros and cons of wearing a helmet when you rode a push bike. In amongst all of that, the physicist in me was like, actually not a physicist, the physicist in me was like, I wonder how fast your head would be going if you dropped it from the height you cycle at and it hit the ground. I suspect it would be going faster than you could ride your bike horizontally. Okay, so we want to work out how fast my bonds would be going if I dropped it from the 1.8 meter height that it's at when I'm cycling my bicycle. Actually, that's the top of my head. Probably we should work from the middle, but uh, anyway, we're going to have to do a bit of derivation here. So first of all, we need to understand that something moving along has some energy. That's, you know, like a cricket ball or a tennis ball that like, is thrown at you and hits you, um, you can feel its energy like when it whacks you in the body. So the stunt meeple here, when it moves along, it has energy. However, if I hold the stunt meeple up here, it also has energy because gravity is acting on it, pulling it down. And we'd like to know how much energy it would have if I let it go. And both of these can be described by two different formulas. The formula for stunt meeple energy, if it's moving, is a half mv squared. m is the weight of the stunt meeple, and v is the speed. So by looking at this formula, you can see that the speed the stunt meeple travels has much more to do with its energy, with its energy than its weight has. So when we're holding it up here, and we let go of it and the stunt meeple travels down, thank you gravity, um, how much energy will it have when it finally meets the floor? It will actually have a half mv squared energy, but we don't know that until it gets there, but we can work it out from where it is here, holding it up. If we measure the distance to the ground and we know the mass of the meeple, we can work out how much energy it will have when it hits the ground. Now, energy is a set resource, like a kilogram or a scalar unit of a number, the number 10. So we can take these two equations and put them on either side of an equals sign, cancel out some stuff and move them around, um, and we can find ourselves or solve for a value of velocity so we will know how fast the stunt meeple will be going when it hits the ground. Likewise, we know how fast my head will be going when it hits the ground. And here's the equation 
Oh, actually, here's the equation here. And the result is just over 20 kilometers an hour. So I can actually cycle 20 kilometers an hour, 20, 21 kilometers an hour. So my head isn't going faster than I would cycle, cool, blah, 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 that I would cycle, but it's still going at a pace I'd rather not smash into something concrete or bitumen or hard. So first of all, I just want to put a few disclaimers here. This is um, probably a bit sketchy. Let's put, let's call it an indication rather than a fact. Because if I'm falling off my bike, I might do something to break my fall. So the speed my head hits the ground will probably be less than if I just let go of it and dropped it. Or maybe the fall has caught me by surprise and I don't have time to react. And as I fall, I whip a bit and my head hits the ground even faster than this. In both of these scenarios, having my bonds protected by this thing is actually probably beneficial. Our conversation started because in Australia, bicycle helmets are mandatory, which actually I don't agree with. I would prefer that, I think, I think this is one of those things where it's better to educate people as to why rather than just to tell them to do. Um, because like, quite frankly, it's a good idea. Years ago, I started wearing a helmet when I was a bicycle courier before I uh, did any study. And I just did it because it seemed like a good idea to me. And I'm not someone who's like, you know, emotionally fragile that worries about people laughing at him because he's wearing a geeky helmet oh, like I just you know I get that people are scared of looking like a fool and they don't want to wear a helmet because that or maybe a face mask because like you know they look like they can form I get that people have these fragilities these emotional fragilities about them but if you don't anyway then I got a job uh, at a local university in the tech department um, and I used to cycle 15 kilometers to work each way. And on, a, on the, uh, during, those, during those commutes, I had a couple of falls. And in one of the falls, when I got up, my helmet was like well and truly stoved in and scarred. And that would have been my head. And so I went from thinking helmets were a good idea to being pretty convinced of it. Then I had this conversation like 25 years later and or probably even more. I don't want to do the math, that maths. And now I'm more convinced of it. And it has a visor to keep the sun out of your eyes. But yeah, now I'm more convinced than ever. The other thing is I always wear gloves. Um, I didn't used to. And then one time, and then the first fall I had, my hands hit the ground and I took all the skin off my palms. And this was right at the beginning of the rugby season, back when I used to play sport. And I could not play for months because the scabs on my hand meant I couldn't pick the ball up and I was a scrum half. And I couldn't tackle because they just bled everywhere all the time if you broke the scabs. So I always wear gloves when I cycle because like who wants smashed up hands? Anyway, well, Yes, yes, we're getting to some board games. So we have two cycling games in our household, in our collection. And one is this one here, Um Reifenbreiter. I hope I got that pronunciation at least close. This is a simple game that um, has actually won the Spiel des Jahres um, in 1992, uh, which was, I think, 20 years after it was designed. This is, I don't think, a new game. It's actually a pretty simple game. You can either stick with the rider in front of you as you go around the course. And if you look on the back of the box, you can actually see there's like a board with a course on it. Um, you can uh, follow the rider in front for free or you can decide to roll a dice. But it's not just a dice rolling game because in amongst that, you actually have a hand of cards that apply to your riders. You have a team of four riders. And you can burn those cards to get a five or a six as one of your dice rolls. Um, and really, this 
is a lot of fun. It's uh, very much a simple family game, which is how it wins this. You don't win this if it can't be played by like a regular family type outing. Um, and I like it. We've played it a few times. It was a gift from a friend. And I'm very grateful for it. The other game I have here is Leader One. And this, this is a very different beast. This is a game where you like have a certain amount of energy per rider in your team. You have a three, a three rider team. Um, you set up a track with some tiles, so the track will be different each time you play it, if you wish. And there's plains, hills, mountain passes. Um, and there's a lot of maths, a lot of min-maxing in this game. Um, it has some beautiful pieces. Um, and once again, this was something that we got second hand. We haven't played this anywhere near enough. Just putting my hand on it makes me want to get it to the table. But some final words on cycling. If you haven't cycled or don't cycle, why not? It's a great way to get around and it's also like really good for physical and particularly mental health. Like, you know those times when there's something on your mind and you know, you're not your best? Getting on a bike and actually hating a hill as hard as you can till you're like nearly passing out breathless is wonderful, wonderful, well I think, mental a mental workout it, it's not, it, it will take your mind off bad shit pretty well anyway maybe your uh where you live there isn't anywhere to ride a bike um i imagine not all cities are very bike friendly if you live in a city but you know you can um do what a lot of people do stick your bike on a train and go somewhere else um and just like put a backpack on your shoulder with some stuff in it and go and find a pub with some friends bikes man you like seriously and while i'm here gloves and a helmet like you know they help even if they help a little bit they're worth having anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video and had something to think about uh maybe uh thought about getting a couple of cycling games oh i should mention the hot game at the moment is a game called flamme rouge which we don't have uh because you know we have two pretty good cycling games um, but if you weren't able to find one of these, you almost certainly would be able to find Flamme Rouge. Um, and having said that, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to, I'd like, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, and please like, share and subscribe.